Hello everyone, happy to have you in VitConf. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Vitas browser mode, the new way of testing browser apps that I love uh, and I'm really excited about. So let's just get straight into it. Well, let's start uh, with, I'm Mohamed Bagher. Uh, I'm the founder of Tiny Libs, the place for Tiny Pool, Tiny Bench, and Tiny Spy, which are the tools that are being used in VTest. I'm also the manager of Fino Agency. It's a web development and web design agency. Feel free to check our website. I'm also the maintainer in VTest and a senior dev in Alibaba Travels. You can find me in Twitter uh, and GitHub also, but I prefer Twitter since we can talk there, so feel free to send me a DM if you have any question. So let's start with the current way of testing uh, browser applications. Right now, we're using JS DOM and Happy DOM as a mainstream tool for testing browser applications in VTest. They're really fast, they're blazingly fast, they're easy and mainstream, as I mentioned. So there's a huge community around them. But the thing is, JS DOM, Happy DOM, or any similar tool are, are an implementation of the web browser APIs and not the real browser API. Uh, so at the end, it's all simulation and not the actual browser. And I actually believe we're testing the browser applications right now in the wrong environment. We're testing them in the Node.js environment and not in the browser, which is the actual and the real environment that the user is going to use our application. So that way, I believe we're going to face some false positives. For instance, let me show you one. Here I have a simple VTest template. Uh, it's currently set to JS down. Uh, it can also be set to happy done, but I just chose this one. So we're just testing that the window object to be defined. I expect it to be passing, so it's not failing. So let's see. As I said, it's passing, but let's test another thing. Let's say we expect the process object also, the global object in Node.js, to be defined and let's see it's actually defined so in many production apps there's nothing weird about it but i actually believe this is wrong because in the real browser environment that the user has we don't have any of these node.js apis along the window so currently as you can see we have the window and the process object which which is an impossible thing unless we do some kind of polyfills or markings. So that's, that's why I believe we can have the browser as our testing environment. So that's exactly the reason why we implemented the browser uh, environment for VTest. So we just spin up a browser for you. You go there, you test your applications, you get more accurate results. And at the end, you're gonna receive them, receive the results in your terminal. So let's have a demo. The same demo that I just showed you, we can go to the options and just disable the JS DOM environment. And there's a new option, there's a new object option uh, in VTest. It's called the browser, where we have three keys, the enable, the name, and the headless. The enabled just like enables and disables the browser, uh, it's obvious. Uh, and the name is the browser name that you're going to test against. For instance, right now using WebDriver IO and Playwright, we actually have six browsers and uh, browser engines. So you can choose any of them by just going to the VTest docs and choose your own browser. I just chose a Chrome for, uh, for the browser that I'm going to test against. And there's also another option called the provider, which you can choose between WebDriver, IO, uh, Playwright, or even your custom provider that you can implement. And if you don't specify it, VTest will specify it as WebDriver, IO. We also have the headless option, which I'm going to explain later. But 
Let's test our application. Let me just close the current process and save the file. So let's just run this test. And as you can see, like we just spinned up the browser and we ran the test, like everything is passing. Uh, and I just removed the process, so it's not failing. I'll add it right now, so you can see the difference between the browser environment and environments like JSTAM, as I showed. So everything is running and passing. Let me just return back the process uh, expectation. Now you can see if I save this file, like the changes are going to be represented and also it failed because it says the process is not defined, which is completely expected in the browser environment under and any other browser. So that's the accuracy that I was talking about because with Vitesse browser mode, everything is in the browser, not anything else, not any other environment like Node.js. So that's just an example. Let me just remove this line and take the, take the test to be passing. I'll also add a log so you can see how the changes are going to be represented in the browser and how the logs are going to be logged there instead of the Node.js environment. Let me go to the inspect, the console. As you can see, we have the here log. And it also send the log over the terminal, so you can e so you can see it easily. The reason why these logs are helpful in the terminal is because sometimes in the CI CD uh, we just set the headless to true. So with setting it to true, we don't have the browser showed up again, the uh, spinned up browser. We won't have it anymore, and the web driver I owe the playwright to any other provider would just do its own work and give us the result. So let me just save, just close. Let me rerun again. You can see there's no browser there and we just have the logs and everything passing. So that's the headless feature of the browser mode. I just removed the log and everything is working. Let me just close this and continue. Next, we have the upcoming features. As I said, uh, in the browser mode, everything is kind of experimental, but you can use it. So that's why we have some features that are not merged yet, but we plan on merging them soon. So the most important one is the isolate browser test. In, in this uh, PR, my friend Joaquin, like they experimented with so many things to achieve isolation. And at the end, we found a way and it's, it was using iframes, which would achieve like the separate context for each test file that we're running. We were just experimenting and we just found out that we can have much more than just an iframe using the iframe itself. For instance, we added the browser UI feature. So you can have the the DOM represented by your test in the browser UI, you can see any changes there and the final result also. I'm excited about this feature because many 3D developers are really excited about this, like Alvaro, which I really find it stunning because I've never thought that we would come this far and people would enjoy this feature. Also with the iframes, along with uh, supporting isolation. We also achieve concurrency. The reason why uh, I just wrote parallelism before because I didn't know that it wasn't parallelism. And there's a discussion under this suite uh, that shows it's concurrency and not parallelism in iframes in some circumstances. So this way we can run as many tests as we want in both isolation and concurrency because Currently, you cannot run that many tests because everything is running in the main context of the tab. But with iframes, we're going to increase the ability and make it support maybe 100 test files. And the next feature is the non-browser provider. As I showed you, we have two providers currently. 
the WebDriver IO and the Playwright, which they spin up their own browser. Next, I want to talk about the non-browser provider mode. It's a provider similar to uh, WebDriver IO and Playwright, but instead of like just pinning up a browser for you, it would give you the link and it would let you test out your application in any browser that you wanted or any environment. The reason why we added this feature is because we wanted to support browsers like Arc or environments like Stacklets, which would be really exciting to use and test our applications there. So let's just have an overview from all of these features. My friend Oakwin uh, also made out all of these templates and examples, so we can test it out easily, though it's, they're all not merged yet. Uh, we would share all of the links with you. Currently, I chose a view example, and, the, and it's called the VTest View Browser example. Like There are two test files, one the basic and one the second. For the basic, we just have a, we just have a hello component here that just multiplies the count by the times and it just gives you the result. Nothing complicated. It's a simple test file just to showcase things for you. And in the config, we have the globals to be true. We enable the browser mode and there's a new option called the enable UI, which is just the browser UI that I showed you here. And we also have a name, which is a Chrome, but when we uh, set the provider to be none, uh, this name won't have any effect in general. We also set the provider to none, so we support the none provider. Let me just run the test and see. You can see it just gave us a link and it opened the tab for our current browser that we're using like daily. We can disable this feature and just get the link and use it everywhere that we want. So we have the basic test here is passing and the second test. For the basic test, like we can see the code, the module graph. And for the new feature called the browser UI, you can see that we have the UI here, the test was passing and we have the final result also. So if we just increment, like you can see the result is changing. If we go to the second test, you can see the browser UI for the second component. So any of these test files have their own results and their own DOM representation using the iframe. So thanks to this feature, you can have the UI for each test so you can easily view the results and how the results is working for you. Let me just close the tab. Here are the links uh, that we're going to share with you also. So feel free to check them out. I want to also say a thank you to the VTest team for giving me the opportunity for experiencing and experimenting with this feature one and a half year ago. And also a huge thanks to Joaquin. Uh, he helped me so much with this and he's taking the lead on the browser feature. And also Jessica Sachs for inspiring me so much on, the, on her work on Cypress. And she taught me so much about the concepts in browser testing that I didn't know. And they were really helpful. I wanted to say big ups to Christian Broman also because he just reached out to me and told me about WebDriver IO and I was really impressed. That's how we just went to support WebDriver IO. Uh, I also want to say a thank you to the WebDriver IO team and also the Playwright team for their amazing providers. And the final thank you would be to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I appreciate the support. So just feel free to give this feature a test and a experiment with it. So we can keep improving this feature until it becomes stable. Thank you so much, guys. Goodbye.